Makes sense. All right. So, end behavior. The basic kind of definition of end behavior is what is happening to the graph as you can't see it anymore. Like, what is the graph doing after it expands outside of the graph? So there's a couple important things. We see here the graph stops, right? So we know where the graph is ending. So there is no end behavior going to the left because the graph has stopped. Would everybody underst does everybody understand and see that, right? However, as the graph continues to the right, you guys can see that this arrow, right? We wrote in like algebra, algebra one and geometry. That means the graph is going to continue in that direction. Okay. Now there's nothing that we know that is going to change, so we are going to assume that it's going to continue going in that direction. So the end behavior is our way to describe the graph continuing in this direction, right? Which very basically we can say is the graph going up or is the graph going down? And we could say the graph is going up, right? So a couple ways in algebra, algebra, um, algebra two that we describe it, saying you know the graph, uh, you know, travels up to the right. Right, that's very just explicit. Sometimes we'd also simplify that and say it rises right. So in algebra two, these usually would be acceptable when you guys are first learning end behavior, and hopefully this is like okay, yeah, uh, either makes sense or I remember exactly that kind of stuff. In pre-calculus, we're going to talk about it in two different kind of ways. All right, the first way is kind of using the um, definition that we guys did for decreasing and increasing intervals. If you guys remember, one of the bigger mistakes students had with increasing and decreasing intervals was applying the y value. So let's call this a function. So this is some function f of x. So that's the x-axis, that's the y-axis. For every point, there is a coordinate x comma f of x. Would you guys agree? There's an x and a y coordinate. But instead of f of x, we're, you, instead of y, we're calling them f of x. But it's the y value. So. As my x values travel to the right, like for right now, you guys agree it's 0, right? And then over here, we could say it's 2 comma f of x. And the reason why I'm using f of x is because we do, do we know what the y value is? No, right? So that was important because when we're talking about increasing, decreasing values, we're not talking about, we don't care about what, how high or up it is. You know, if we were going to say like, let's say that's the lowest value. If we were going to talk about decreasing, we'd say the graph is decreasing from 0 to 3 x value of 0, x value of 3. Would you guys agree? OK. So end behavior is kind of the same thing. We're traveling to the right. So we went from 2 to 3. And then we could go to like 5. Now, we're not talking about the increasing, decreasing values. But what's happening is, my question is, what is going to happen at 8? Where is this graph really kind of going? So what we'd write is, as x go toward, goes towards infinity. Because would you guys agree, as I keep on going further to the right, my x values are going to keep on getting larger and larger. And there's really no end to how far to the right I can go, correct? So we say, as the x coordinates approach infinity, that little arrow saying approaching infinity, my f of x values, we have no idea what these f of x values are. I know they're decreasing from here to here. But then they turn and they start to increase. Now, how high or how large can f of x get? To infinity. So as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches infinity. So rather than saying it rises to the right, a formal notation would say, as x goes to infinity, f of x approaches infinity. To make things even more confusing, we're also going to introduce another way to represent them that you guys will see that you will be assessed on. And that brings into the limit definition. All right, And we'll talk more about this later. I don't really want to get too much into limits um, because we'll be teaching this at the end of the year. But the important thing I want you guys to understand is another way to write this is by using LIM, which represents the limit. And what the limit is is still really the same thing as the limit as x approaches infinity. If you guys think about, you know, you have a limit, right? There's like the maximum, right? Like that's the most you can take. So the limit just means what is like the maximum that you can take x to? Well, so as x is approaching infinity, so it's really just the same thing. It's just written under the limit. So as x is approaching infinity, where is it? Where is my function going towards? It's still approaching 
and affinity. So these are the two different notations you guys are going to be asked to use, not these. Okay? So we gotta make sure that we understand those two notations. We're gonna be using both of those. All right? Now, the note as I mentioned, guys, I know it can be a little bit 